Okay, so just so everyone is aware, this webinar is being recorded. Welcome everyone. My name is Jill Baird and I work for the state of North Dakota. I am an information technology specialist in Edutech, which is the educa educational services division within North Dakota information technology. With me today is also Kelly Rexine and um, we will be presenting for you. NDIT is doing whatever possible to ensure that the entities we support are able to function in a wide variety of situations. For K-12 schools, we know our North Dakota administrators and educational personnel are carefully navigating how to proceed with classes, communication, and collaboration while addressing concerns around COVID-19. Edutech's remission remains to provide technology services and leadership to improve teaching and learning in North Dakota pre-K-12. We are continuing that mission by providing this webinar series and are here to support our North Dakota K-12 community with support, training, and resources. So we are going to get started talking about reading in a digital environment. Um, and so the first thing I want to talk about is the digital brain. So I started reading this book, Reader Complain by Mary Ann Wolf. It's really an interesting book because she starts, she's looking at how our brain has been changing um, with, with what we're reading and how we're reading it now. She said that we're reading about 100,000 words a day, which seems like a lot of words that we're reading, but instead of reading in long intervals where we're really digging deep into material, we're reading in shorter intervals. And this is happening because our attention span has been decreasing with the increase in digital content. She also mentions that um, with reading the shorter intervals and the shorter attention span, we're not reading as deep as we used to. So we're not getting that full meaning and deeper connections. We're missing a lot of metaphors when we're reading. And this is causing a lot of problems, not only in how we're reading, but understanding um, how fake news and misinformation uh, misguide our lives. So we really need to be aware of how this is working for our students and what we can do to help our students become better readers, even in this digital platform. So we're going to talk about some options that we have to help dig in deeper and create some of those more meaningful connections for our students. So the first option that we want to talk about is digital textbooks. Now, the big three book companies, Houghton Mifflin, Pearson, and McGraw, they all have some sort of online reading interface. Um, sometimes you might have to pay for it, sometimes it just comes with the books. It's, it really depends on what series you work with. But for example, McGraw-Hill, they have all of these as an option. So they have offline reading that you can do on a device. You can study anytime, anywhere, and you don't always have to have a physical copy of a heart of a book. Um, you can have one of their ebooks. One of the really nice features that I think most of these book companies also offer is um, highlighting and note taking. So this is really going to help with some of that deeper understanding because like you would in a physical copy of a book, you might take some notes in the, in the margins of your book. Um, you can do that when you're reading these eBooks. So you can highlight, take notes, and it's not going to impact um, what the book like looks like. There's also, video, audio, interactive activities. The nice thing is that it syncs across platforms. It really doesn't matter what device you are using because it's available on all devices. So this is the first step that you want to take and really not just say, okay, you're reading this, this excerpt from the story that you, you're assigning your students or, or chapter of a book. You are getting your students to go in and get deeper into the content that they're reading so that they have that deeper understanding of their, their materials. Another option that we have is asynchronous message boards. So one of the reasons that we, I really love OneNote Class Notebook being built into Teams is that we can use these asynchronous message boards. So um, I have this example, which I will pull up in OneNote in just a moment, but there's um, some ideas that we need to talk about this because um, Jason M. Kelly, he's a professor at the Indiana University School of Liberal Arts, 
put together a list of 10 things that you should do for these asynchronous message boards. And these are just a few of those ideas. So setting um, a small set of questions to spark that discussion, having a variety of types of questions, demonstrating how you want students to respond and providing guidelines for your students when you are having them um, respond to these message boards are really important. So for example, um, I have my team here, and this is just a, a random team that I have that that um, I, I use to demonstrate. But in my collaboration space, I have set up a reading discussion. So this reading discussion, I have I'm talking about the Telltale Heart. And so in the Telltale Heart, the narrator decides to kill his neighbor, an old man. After he kills the old man, he dismembers the body and hides different parts in the floorboards. This is a classic story for eighth grade. Um, but we want to get our students talking about it even if we aren't all together. And, and you can do this even if you are um, meeting your students face to face. But um, the first question that I have is what is the relationship between the professions of the guilty narrator and his claims to sanity and reliability? So for example, I just put this quick little response to this question in, and then I put my initials at the end. So this is me modeling how I want my students to be responding. Um, I put in a couple other questions as well. And so this question is, what is a vulture? How, why does the narrator call the old man I a vulture eye? So it's pulling out some of that symbolism within the story. And then this third question is, what do you think will happen after the story ends? And so they're, they're looking at what's going to happen in the future with the story, uh, not necessarily what is happening within the story, but how they think it will end. So this is just three examples of questions that you can use with asynchronous message boards and um, get your students thinking about their stories or, or whatever it is that they're reading a little bit deeper. Another option is Flipgrid. Now, I love Flipgrid. I will talk about Flipgrid all the time. And there's so many great options with Flipgrid um, for all grade levels. And so for, for the younger students that were still working with reading fluency, Flipgrid is a great option for them to record themselves while reading passages. And so part of um, some of the problems that we have when it comes to reading is their fluency um, sometimes struggle is a struggle. And so if we can keep practicing with that fluency and getting our students to read and reread and continue to practice um, saying words out loud, um, we're really going to help them improve their reading skills. So Flipgrid is a great option for that. Other options um, are to reflect or respond to what you're reading. So similar to OneNote using um, the, the questions as responses, um, I've set up a couple in here, Peter Rabbit and the Telltale Heart. So, out of, oops, too far. Come back out here. Here's my my flip grid. And if I come in here to, no, I can't remember where it's at. Here in test. So in test, I have the telltale heart reflections. And so when I come in here, um, this is for after students have read the telltale heart, but I will say, who do you think the narrator is telling the story to? Why is he telling? this person, is this narrator reliable? And then what components of the of a scary story are present in the telltale heart? So I'm giving students five minutes to respond to these different questions. And this just gets them, gets them thinking a little bit deeper about what's happening in the story. And so this is just the first question that we have for reflection. Um, the other one that I have, this is for, for younger kids, but I think you could have some fun with some of your mid, like middle school grades too. Um, this is for Peter Rabbit. And so this is um, Rose Byrne reading uh, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. And this is from Storyline Online. And so um, she reads the story. It takes a few minutes to listen to her reading the story. It's a little bit animated. 
But then afterwards, my response or my reflection that I want my students to do is when you're finished, retell the story to me in your recording. And so they'll respond to this recording or to, to this video by retelling the story about what happened in the video. So it's a great way to get students to think about the story and remember some of those specific details so that they can retell the story again as well. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to presenter mode and this is gonna flip again. There we go. Okay, so Flipgrid, reading fluency, reflecting, responding to what students are reading. These are both great options. Okay, so the next one is the Nerdy Book Club. Okay, and I think I am done being in here. So I'm just going to escape out again. Um, the Nerdy Book Club is a fun blog that I found. And so in this blog, we have recommendations by different individuals. And so as you scroll through, you can see um, when they were posted and can keep going to older posts and see what other people have to say about some of these stories. There's book trailers in here, um, origin stories, rescuing by heroines. Um, so if I come in here, I'm just going to click on this one. Investigating Beyond the Book with Fiction and Facts by David A. Kelly. And so this person has written, a, or actually this is an author that has written um, a blog post that you can read and it gives you some ideas of what you can do with your students. So you're getting some book recommendations, you're getting some ideas of what you can do with your students or um, at home. Um, so it's just a really fun idea to get into um, the Nerdy Book Club. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to pull my PowerPoint slides over here real quick, um, our library options. Now, our libraries have done a really great job of going digital. And so, for example, I live in Grand Forks and my local library has gives me access when I get my public library card right here. Um, I'm a card carrying member of the Grand Forks Public Library. And because of that, I get access to OverDrive or some people use the Libby app instead. And so it's very easy to get into that. Um, all I have to do is go to the Grand Forks Public Library, find the library to go. And this takes me straight out to library to go digital media. Um, I can download it for Libby. I can download it onto my Kindle, which I'm always reading. And so um, I can find um, a different book. So, for example, I have read The Count of Monte Cristo before, but it's a really big book. I don't always want to be carrying that with me. And so if I do The Count of Monte Cristo, it's going to come up with the Count of Monte Cristo the book. And so I can click on this title and I can see the Count of Monte Cristo. It's available in ebook. Um, there's a wait list on this audio version. Um, there's the Black Count. This is, this is about uh, Dumas' uh, father, actually. But if I come here, this ebook, it's available. I can click on this and I can click borrow. I can say how many days I'm going to borrow this for. I can do 14 or 21. It's a big book, so I want to be a little bit longer. I'm going to click borrow. And now um, I am able to download this book. I can do EPUB. I can go um, as an ebook, so then I can download it onto any device that I need to. Um, one thing we do have to be careful with with our students and, and the reading deeper portions of it is a book like The Count of Monte Cristo. I'm probably going to want to come back and read the physical copy of this book because of that attention span. Um, we want to still make sure our students are getting the physical copies of our books. Um, digital's fine and digital in this time period where we don't want to have um, a lot of copies floating around between our students, but uh, it's always good to come back to those physical copies as well. Um, the other option that we have is our state library. 
And so when you are come to our state library, so here's the home page for the state library, and you come to the dash for databases section over here, um, they have RB Digital. And this is just like um, what my local library has for library to go, except it's a different platform. And so RB Digital, all you have to do is have a state library card. Um, to get a state library card is very easy. You can go to services for the public and then click on library card. When you go here, you have a couple of options. So we have a library card application, but you have to be over 18, you're 18 or over. And then there's the under 18 library card application. So this application is very easy to fill out. You can send copies of this home with students, but it's getting them that state library card. And this library card actually came really fast for me. I think I got it within a week. Um, so it's a great way to get our students um, online and reading. But once again, don't forget, always come back to those physical copies just so that we have that deeper reading. Okay, um, let's see, where are my ads? Kelly, are you ready to take it I away? Am, am. There we go. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. There we go. Um, so there's two um, sites that I'm going to show you today. Um, the first one is Newzella or News ELA. Uh, I use this um, in the elementary classroom and then some of my tech integrations. And then the second one is Powtoon, uh, more of a storing telly, storing telly, telling. Um, uh, way that you can get kids to start creating and and uh, videos and things like that. So uh, the first one is Newzella. Um, it's when you sign in, you can use your K-12 account. So there's no added, uh, you got to sign up for this or that. Uh, you can click on Office 365 and, and join right from there. Uh, so is your students, but uh, you'll see that this is a an educator account. So you'll see on the education piece, but um, note that your students would look fairly similar to this. Um, Newzella brings in featured articles. Um, there's news, uh, anything featured like now is kind of like current events that's right now. Uh, news, popular things that have been going through the news. Uh, good news, I thought that was kind of cool that they added this a while back because uh, it's always nice to hear some good news. And then um, some Spanish um, articles that uh, for your ELL students uh, be able to view those too. Um, but again, so I'm just on featured. Uh, you can see that there's tech sets. So um, Ruth Ginsburg here, uh, there's two different, if I click into that, there would be two different articles for uh, my students to read uh, there. Again, as the, uh, as the teacher, I could assign or create an assignment or assign any one of these articles as I choose. Um, if I go back, I can also browse. My, my students could do the exact same thing. Um, they could browse through uh, ELA um, subject areas as science, uh, social studies, um, the election news, and the, again with uh, Spanish. And um, you can set those or you can save those by just these little save icons, these little bookmarks here, and all those content contents would live there. Um, if you had a, a tech set that you really wanted to pull um, something together, like this is our uh, March or this is our May um, tech set, uh, that you can do that also. Um, going into one of them, um, so now you can just see I'm just scrolling down and this will change as is. Uh, but going into one of them, so this one again, this says an article. Uh, if I click on one, uh, this would look very similar with my students too. Uh, but the really cool thing is that you can um, present from here. So if I'm in front of my class, I can present from here. Again, I could save it. I, there is also a read aloud uh, feature, which is really nice uh, for students that uh, may not be able to read at this level. You can share it out to you know Teams and Google Classroom and all that kind of good stuff. If you wanted to hide it from your students, you could do that. Um, you could also print it, and then again, you could add it to your text sets as, as you wish. Um, a really nice feature is you up in this top right-hand corner, you can click on the Lexile level, 
And this, this will actually change um, the Lexile level of the um, article. So here I'm at 1040, uh, maybe I'm at 810, it'll actually switch the Lexile level to um, my reading level, uh, which is really, really powerful, I think. So um, again, as a teacher, I can assign this or I cre could create an assignment. And then um, your students would also see this, this little activities tab on the right. They could click on this. They would also have the option to do some writing or descriptive writing from here. And then they also have a quiz feature. So they would have a four point quiz to go through and answer, um, uh, you know, some of the questions that they, they would get right or wrong, that kind of thing. Um, there is some paid for, uh, features of this. Um, if you want students data on any of this kind of stuff, that would be a paid feature, but uh, they, you can go ahead and just assign this article and say, go ahead and take the quiz um, and see how you do kind of thing or, or you know, um, do a flip grid or response to this article or uh, post this article, post your response in Teams or something like that too. But um, note that they do have, they have that too. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about Newzella. Um, the second one that I was gonna show you is Powtoon. Uh, Powtoon, if you're ever familiar with uh, like iMovie or Movie Maker, iMovie would be for the Mac, Movie Maker would be for the PC. Uh, Powtoon is pretty cool because you can get uh, content um, into slides really, really quickly. You don't have to create a bunch. It's already kind of created, and then you just put it where, where you want. Um, I did this with um, uh, sixth graders in steel, and um, we, uh, you know, the kids really grasp the concept of just putting their content in there, um, messing around with it, editing it a little bit, and then uh, sharing that out. Again, you can sign in with your K-12 account. Um, if I go to just blank, a lot of these are paid features, um, so they do, uh, um, will will charge you for certain features. Um, everything that I've done has been free. Uh, I know some of the paid features are you have the logo is still on the video. Um, there is a three three minute time limit, so anything over three minutes you'd have to pay for. And then you wouldn't be able to download it as an MP4. Uh, so if you had that ability, you know you you created this um, this uh, slideshow and you wanted to download it as an mp4 or a movie, um, you would be able to, um, the way we got around it was you could upload it to a YouTube channel and then you could download it from there. So um, those are some of the paid features that you would, um, you know, you can pay for, but you can also get around them too. Um, they have really good instruction videos, uh, help, that kind of thing. Um, just to kind of quickly show you what it looks like, uh, I'm just going to go to blank here and then uh, horizontal. And then it brings in um, all of your kind of features are on the right hand side here. Um, you also have five different features that you want. So there's like a modern edge and it kind of shows you what it kind of looks like. Uh, here's more of the whiteboard, cartoon, infograph, and then reel. If you had videos that were already created, you could put those kind of in the back of the background. Um, so you can just pick one and then it'll bring in all the scenes. Again, this kind of looks like PowerPoint or iMovie, that kind of thing, but you have blank slides. So we have a blank slide here. This again, this would be that's the free version. It would have to sit there, um, but you can go ahead and click on one. Um, say this is a free one. The ones that say the ones that say pro or pro, pro plus, we're going to they're going to charge you for. But you can find a lot of them that are just free. Um, and then students have something that's just that's right there. Um, then they can start beginning to edit and that kind of thing. So they can go ahead and just type on it. And then uh, from there, they would have their scene. So you have your little um, scroll bar here, you have five second scene, and it just kind of puts that in there already for them. So they don't need to cre really create anything. They're just kind of um, editing what is already created for them. And then you build multiple slides and put them together in a, a, as a movie kind of thing. So. So yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit about Newzella and and Powtoon. I'll turn it back over to you, Jill. <laughs> Great, thanks. Okay, you. Um, I just want to talk a little bit more 
um, about some different reading options that we have um, available to us. Um, Common Sense Media, they really do a good job about looking at all different options that are available in or for apps and um, websites. And so they have put together a um, a top 20 list of reading apps and websites that you can utilize for your classroom. And so um, digital library and reading apps uh, and websites make it easier than ever to help students dive into text on their own terms and better understand what they're reading. So they have a list of 20 um, resources. These are just the top five, but I, if I go out to the website, um, here is um, their website, best digital library, digital, best digital library and reading apps and websites um, list. And so if I scroll through here, there's a lot of options. It gives you what grade level it has. Um, these are available for, so like grades pre-K through five, K through three. Um, as you keep scrolling down, like you have light sales, that's for grades one through 12, Mozilla, you just talked about. So um, there are some really great options out there for um, getting students into reading and like especially with Newzilla, that's a great option for us to um, dive into the text a little bit deeper and try to make sure that students are pulling out some of those basic details as well as they're reading um, through those quizzes at the end of, of each of those readings. Um, readings. So um, common sense, really great recommendations. Um, but at this point, um, help desk change. If you have any questions, you can always contact our help desk or contact us directly. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. And we have some upcoming webinars as well. So next Thursday, we're going to have one on Microsoft Whiteboard. Um, Code.org is the following week, Minecraft updates. And then also we'll have a webinar on mindfulness. So at this point, if there are any questions, um, please let us know. Um, and we will stick around for any questions that anybody has. Otherwise, we will say thank you for um, t attending today. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to us as well. Thank you so much.